You know what we need to do next year? We need to mainstream knowledge of Operation Mockingbird. And I know I've been saying that for years. I've been saying it for over 15 years since before YouTube was even a thing. But this last year, particularly even the last month, we've been making some great progress. Just two weeks ago, Kim.com, the kind of infamous internet entrepreneur, was in a Twitter space, which is Twitter's sort of online conference call. It's basically a gigantic group call where a bunch of people get together and discuss things and anybody can listen in. And they were talking about the recent Twitter file releases and how corrupt the mainstream media is. And he was encouraging people to research Operation Mockingbird. Glenn Greenwald, the independent journalist who Edward Snowden leaked those NSA documents to back in 2013, proving the Orwellian extent that the government goes to to spy on American citizens, violating the Constitution. He mentioned it briefly on Tucker Carlson's show last year in December 2021, which I covered at the time. But here's the clip just in case you missed it. If you go and Google, and I hope your viewers do, Operation Mockingbird, what you will find is that during the cold war, these agencies used to plot about how to clandestinely manipulate the news media to disseminate propaganda to the American population. They used to try and do it secretly. They don't even do it secretly anymore. They don't need Operation Mockingbird. They literally put John Brennan, who works for NBC, and James Clapper, who works for CNN, and tons of FBI agents right on the payroll of these news organizations. They now shape the news openly to manipulate and deceive the American population. Other than that, the only other time that somebody has mentioned it ever on mainstream television was a Washington Times editor on C-SPAN, which probably nobody was even watching. That is until earlier this year when comedian and culture jammer Alex Stein was also on Tucker Carlson's show and he said this. Because what happens is we have what is called the Mockingbird Media. They admit the CIA has uh, uh, liaisons in every single form of our entertainment from the radio, television, news, and film. So you have a media that will say Hunter Biden's laptop is fake. And guess where Alex Stein learned about Operation Mockingbird? From me. He told me that. Also, over the last year, Candace Owens tweeted about Operation Mockingbird several times, and I think she is the only kind of mainstream major figure to do so. And guess what she talked about just a few weeks ago on her podcast? So yeah, it does sound like they are a bunch of mockingbirds, which is appropriate, of course, because that was the CIA program title. It was called Operation Mockingbird. You are not a conspiracy theorist for knowing the truth. And you are correct if you know about the Mockingbird being something that the CIA has never discontinued. So first and foremost, in case you are not aware of what Operation Mockingbird was and still is, it was a large scale project undertaken by the CIA beginning in the 1950s in which they recruited American journalists into a propaganda network. The recruited journalists were put on payroll by the CIA, which means me and you, we paid for that, and instructed to write fake stories that promoted the views of the intelligence agencies. So some journalists were assets to the CIA and were on the payroll. Other journalists were unsuspecting assets of the CIA because they thought that they had a leak, that they were being given information. And they ran with the stories because they thought they were being told the truth. Bravo. Charlie Kirk also talked about it earlier this year, just days after I called him out in a previous YouTube video that I did, pointing out the sad fact how nobody in the conservative movement, at least the mainstream brand name, you know, corporate conservative types, ever talk about it. He even titled his podcast, Operation Mockingbird and the Deep State. You're making progress, Charlie. We're proud of you. Now, he has never publicly responded or acknowledged any of my comments about him. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that occasionally I am critical of him and others in the conservative ink inner circle because they're veering a little bit too far to the left for our country's own good. But he hears the commentary and he sees your tweets and your comments, guys. So keep it up. We have to continue helping the brand name Republicans and the corporate conservatives do the right thing when they're being too cowardly or they're passing around some liberal Kool-Aid with our constructive criticism. If we keep nudging them in the right direction, who knows, maybe next year they'll actually cover the Bohemian Grove or the Bilderberg Group. Sean Hannity blocked me on Twitter many years ago, by the way, because I kept asking him why he didn't cover such an important establishment, insider, consensus-building, deep state event. Charlie Kirk, if you didn't know, by the way, supports gay 
marriage, and even worse, gay adoption and gay surrogacy. So I think it's cool you're married, I think it's great, and you should have all the same tax benefits, adopt children, it's great. No. Right? But I you, feel the same way about you. Well, it's fine, it's like whatever. Which might be why he's the Republican establishment's favorite poster boy for conservatism. And don't give me this crap about not punching right, because some of the things that he stands for are just pure wrong. They're garbage. What is your brand of conservatism doing to actually conserve Christian morality? If we're ceding to the left on transgender, gay rights, gay marriage, we don't want that in conservatism. So you don't want him in the conservative movement? I just want to be very clear. Let's just be... So, so, you, don't, so you don't want me in the movement? Hold on a sec. The Daily Wire's Michael Knowles, who also has a show, or at least did have a show, a weekly podcast, I think, with Ted Cruz called The Verdict, also recently mentioned Operation Mockingbird, albeit briefly during an event for the Young Americas Foundation. Now, I suspect many people in this room could, could recite a litany of famous conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. I bet you could do it right off the top of your heads. Then there's Operation Mockingbird. That one, again, very basic. It was the, the very effective CIA campaign to control the messaging coming out of the New York Times and Newsweek and CBS and lots of other news outlets. I don't have a problem with the Daily Wire as a whole, just to be clear. I think Matt Walsh and Candace Owens do great work. I just don't like little whiny neocon never Trumper Ben Shapiro, who is also just like that character Uncle Leo in Seinfeld sitcom, who sees anti-Semitism around every corner. It shows my family's nuts, they're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my Uncle Leo, I had lunch with him the other day. He's one of these guys that anything goes wrong in life, he blames it on anti-Semitism. You know what I mean? The spaghetti, <laughs> not al dente, I'll cook anti-Semite. They're right there, yeah. Yeah, loses a bet on a horse, secretariat, anti-Semitic. <laughs> Kanye decided that he was going to go full anti-Semitic. Kanye West, anti-Semitic. Kanye West saying an anti-Semitic thing. Saying crazy anti-Semitic things, which is anti-Semitism. Kanye West uh, said some anti-Semitic things. And there are no two ways about this. The things that he said are not just like a little anti-Semitic, they're very anti-Semitic. This is all really bad stuff. Suffice to say, this is all very anti-Semitic and really, really bad stuff. He is saying openly anti-Semitic stuff. They are anti-Semitic. I mean, there, there's no two ways about them. No sympathy for anti-Semitic statements, I think, is a, is a fairly decent rule when it comes to situations like this one. So again, this is an anti-Semitic trope that, that basically you can't say bad things about Jews. I first learned about Operation Mockingbird shortly after I graduated college. I have a bachelor's degree in communication, by the way, when I was researching my first book, The Resistance Manifesto, which came out in 2005. Back then, the resistance meant resistance against the New World Order. And then obviously, after the 2016 presidential election, the Democrats co-opted that term and completely tarnished it by calling themselves the resistance. But that book, which is still available on Amazon.com and gets more relevant as time goes on, has a subsection on Operation Mockingbird. And here's me back in 2010, over a decade ago, on a little-known internet radio show, one of the few that would actually listen to me back then. And if anybody wants any real hardcore evidence of this, just look into the church hearings back in the late 1970s mm -hmm. and, and look at the published report about Operation Mockingbird back in the 70s. I mean, it's, it's just fully a congressional hearing investigating the CIA, and they uncovered and admitted that the CIA was paying, at that time, like 200 and some million dollars a year, in, according to, uh, you know, adjusted for today's inflation, it's a billion dollars a year. They were paying off the reporters uh, and the editors, really, to, to gatekeep, to kill stories, and to plant propaganda. So, I mean, there, there's your evidence right there. Someday Mark Dice was right, will be a meme, but strangely, or I guess expectedly, none of my previous videos on Operation Mockingbird show up in the search results on YouTube unless you actually add my name to the search terms. There are dozens and dozens of videos, many with less than 100 views, but mine with over a quarter million views just seem to have vanished down the memory hole. There's so much more that I can get into in these brief videos, so you should definitely read my books because there's an entire chapter in The True Story of Fake News and The Liberal Media Industrial Complex on Operation Mockingbird, not to mention they're filled with a whole bunch of other information that I can't really get into here on YouTube. If you like my videos, you're really gonna love reading my books. So head on over to amazon.com and pick up the true story of fake news, how mainstream media manipulates millions, the liberal media industrial complex, or my latest Hollywood propaganda, how TV, movies, and music shape our culture in paperback from amazon.com, or download the eBooks from any of the major eBook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check them out. <laughs>